All right, folks, so you've learned about citizen science and you even recorded some of your own data in our last class for Project Budburst. But can we use the large data set from Project Budburst to ask our own questions? Let's see how we might do that. Abigail and I created this file uh, to take a look just at the plants that are most represented in Project Budburst. This will be the first step in asking a question of a large data set. Budburst has many, many trees and also the bottom two options, California poppy and the common dandelion, are wildflowers that are available. On the right, you can see the kinds of data that are available for each of these plants. We have the latitude, the longitude, the day of year of the observation, the year for back to as far as 10 years in time, and the phenophase data. Remember, the phenophase just refers to the timing of a particular event, and there are a lot to choose from. So what's possible? What could we ask using the data looking at these trees and wildflowers? Well, first, you could ask a question that's very narrow in scope and specific, like the one that we asked in class. For instance, you could look at whether latitude affected the bud burst timing for just one tree, like the Japanese maple. You may notice right away that the Japanese maple does not appear on the list of the most common species, and that's because Abigail and I didn't want you to just be able to take our sample questions without picking a plant or question that really meant something to you. Some other things that you can ask are increasingly broad in scale. So you can look at how budburst might change over the last 10 years with a particular tree, like the black birch. This would give you more information about something like climate change. We want you to really be able to read these questions on your own, but take a look because they do increase in challenge. For instance, this very last question, do all maple species in a particular region, east versus west, share similar phenophase timing? Here, you'd actually have to divide the plants up into two large groups, one on the east and one on the west, using something like longitude, and then look at the phenophase over a few different phenophase stages. The next thing that you'd have to do is look at whether or not this same trend existed in individual species as well. There's so much to do. But wait, it's not just trees and wildflowers. There's another type of plant and data set recorded in Project Budburst, and this is called the Budburst Native R species. There's a link in your document that'll tell you a little bit more about what these are, but what you should know is that they're flower species that have been domesticated. The available data for this is far richer, so rather than just land longitude and latitude, day of year, and the year, you also have things like temperature, cloud cover, flowering stage, number of open flowers, and height. You can think of this as something parallel to DBH, a kind of data that we use often in our graphs in class. There's also a number of pollinators present, and a slight trick. There are years recorded, but they only go back one or two, so you're not going to be able to look at these plants and the impact of climate change. So what about these? What could you ask using the data from native ours? For one, you could ask how the height affected the number of flowers. So you might look at a specific species like the Jill of Rocks and just graph these two together. Another thing that you might look at is whether or not temperature could affect the number of pollinators across all native ours. You could even further explore whether or not that trend persisted with individual species. Again, there's a list of sample questions. We'd love for you to read each one and figure out one that really resonates with you. What are you interested in? What compels you? How much challenge are you willing to take on? Again, the final question here is one that's pretty tricky. Here you'd look at do native ours with common features like color or leaf shape have similar timing for all the flowering stages or the types and number of pollinators present? Here you'd have to start your research by really looking at the native ours in particular, identifying the common features and then graphing the flowering stages. Well, We've done some of the work for you and a lot of the work remains. We're really excited to see how you're going to take this species list and these sample questions and ask your own. If you have any questions at all, Abigail and I are in office hours and we're happy to help in any way that we can.